The main lesson, I think, is that Thailand's economy was growing too fast. But the growth did not come from domestic strength. Instead, it involved a lot of foreign debt. Another reason is that the country's exchange rate was packed to the U.S. dollar, resulting in a serious overvaluation of the Thai baht. There were also external reasons. In 1994, the U.S. experienced a bout of inflation. So America raised interest rates eight times in one year, by a total of 300 basis points. The inflation was managed, but the dollar appreciated as a result. So, a large amount of U.S. dollars flowed out of Southeast Asia back to the U.S. This, in turn, made it difficult for Asian economies to repay foreign debts. In my opinion, developing countries must pay attention to the balance of payments. Second, they should have a floating exchange rate. Last, they should be cautious about the process of liberalizing their capital accounts. The U.S. dollar is both the domestic currency of the United States and an international currency. However, America's proportion in the world economy has been decreasing. What's more, how much was its government debt 25 years ago? Below 70% of GDP. By the end of 2021, it reached 128% and rising. In this way, the dollar is at risk of depreciation in the long run. Since it is the world reserve currency, it brings huge risks that are beyond any market risks. This has a lot to do with the well-being of emerging economies and developing countries. Therefore, I think the international community has the right to exercise necessary oversight over U.S. monetary policy through the G20 Leaders Summit and the G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meetings. By the end of 1996, China had already achieved current account of convertibility. But our move towards capital account convertibility is gradual. So far, basically most of the capital account transactions are open. I think there is still a way to balance opening up and managing the risks. On the other hand, we need ample foreign exchange reserves to push forward capital account convertibility. China's foreign reserves are more than 3 trillion yuan. But this volume cannot be solely based on the amount needed to settle trade. We have a saying, which is two month or two quarters reserves are still not enough. Therefore, we must have ample reserves. And it is an important prerequisite to achieving capital account convertibility and ensuring the balance of international payments.